Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 39. We're going to begin with verse 7. And we're going to be looking at the situation Joseph faced. Joseph, a, a, a great, great type of the Lord Jesus Christ, had to go through it. Had to go through it. And, uh, you know, the verse that when Paul said to Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, I can't help but think of Joseph in this situation. So starting with verse 1, no, I'm sorry, verse 7, it says, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife, remember Joseph was uh, working for this uh, big shot in Egypt under Pharaoh, his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. In that verse you'll see wotteth, W-O-T-T-E-T-H, if you're following along. Uh, that means knows not. My master knows not. Wadeth is past tense for the German verb W-I-S-S-E-N, wissen, in German means to know. And that's where you get the word wist when Jesus, in Luke's gospel where it says, wist ye not that I must be about my father's business. So every now and then you've got a German uh, word showing up here. No big deal. There's no reason for a person uh, to put aside the King James Bible. Oh, I can't understand it, Brother Militello. We'll go back to school, okay? I mean, what could I say? There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Notice that, sin against God. He was always aware of his... Uh, contract with the Lord. How, how can he sin against God? Meanwhile, this is a guy that's been <laughs> cast out by his brethren and sold into slavery almost in Egypt and by God's grace got raised up and is in a good position and now he's in trouble. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled. And got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. Notice in verse 14, the anti-Semitism comes up right away. This is taking place in Egypt. And uh, you've got the mention of, well, he brought in a Hebrew. In other words, like we used to say in Brooklyn, that dirty Jew, that miserable kike. Uh, you see, right away, the anti-Semitism, the Jew hatred, uh, nail the Jew. It's his fault. It's the Hebrew. And it came to pass, verse 15, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant. Why does she just say your servant Joseph, your boy? She says, The Hebrew servant, which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. And I guess she wants the, her husband to know these Jews are evil. I didn't like them from the beginning. I don't know why you hired them and blah, blah, blah. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant uh, to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. <coughs> By the way, uh, Joseph, it turns out, if you look at Genesis 41, what is it, verse 46, he's 10 years in prison. Yeah, he's 10 years there. And uh, he's about 30 when he gets out. That's when the Lord begins his public ministry. See that? 
Now, uh, 10 years in prison and uh, two years already in Egypt after being uh, cast out by his brothers. Uh, so he's 18 years old when he gets this uh, job uh, working in the house of this uh, wealthy, this prosperous Egyptian, at Potiphar. That's Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard. He's a big shot. And uh, he's 18, and uh, he's got two years on the job, and she might have been after him for two years. Who knows? Uh, he winds up in prison. So uh, what am I saying here? Uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Now, uh, we get, I'm realizing that uh, we're getting close to the end of this year, and I don't know, only the Lord knows what's ahead for us. Uh, but keep on fighting because you're going to have to fight to hold on to what you have in the Lord. Joseph fought. Joseph fought a fight that most men, uh, well, maybe they don't have this kind of circumstance come on them. When they resist evil to such a degree that they get thrown in jail for it, for doing right, for doing right. Now, uh, the Bible says in Genesis, not good for a man to be alone. Joseph was alone at a critical time of his life. You know, when you're 18, uh, the chemical things start kicking in, and, you know, I'm sure he, he had as much of the old nature as any of us have, but he was dedicated, obviously, to God. This was a, a young man that wanted to serve the Lord with all his heart, do right, his brothers were jealous of him. That's why they wanted to get rid of him. And uh, he's got to fight off this problem. I, I don't know if you've, if anyone listening has been in this kind of situation. It could be pr pretty bad. You know, today, because of the uh, feminine stuff, the uh, verbal abuse charges, a lot of men working in offices have to be very careful about their speech or how they address how they deal with their women co-workers or even women bosses for that matter. Now, back in my day when I worked in uh, New York City government, I'm looking back and I'm saying to myself, you know, a number of times I could have really been in trouble uh, because the speech back then wasn't as guarded as it is today. It has to be because women are ready to go to the human resources uh, people and say this this fellow is uh, sexually abusive or verbally abusive or whatever. wasn't such a big deal in my day, not at all, because I remember the women that worked in our office, if anything, they coveted fl flattery and compliments. <laughs> I don't think it were put off too much by men saying, well, some things obviously were going to offend them, but they were few and far between, and I remember the uh, the women uh, liked attention. I mean, that's it. They liked attention. Now, watch out. So I guess maybe I might have been guilty of saying some things that might have gotten me in trouble. Who knows? As a married man, I wasn't looking for trouble. I was just looking to get my job done, my work done, and bring home a paycheck and support my family. But here's Joseph in a very, very bad situation. He's running away from temptation. Now, if you live long enough, and I'm going on 76, so, and I've been 40, it's going to be 44 years in Christ this coming January. I've been around the block, so to speak, and I've had some of these situations occur uh, even after getting in the ministry. I, I got to tell you, there were situations there where uh, some women were just, uh, I don't know, too, too interested not only in just what I had to say regarding the, scripture, the scriptures, but uh, too interested in me for that matter. I don't know why. You know, looking back, you start to think, well, God puts you in a position of authority and people look up to you and, and women are looking for real men, uh, not pansies for the most part. And uh, I guess the way I came off with certainty, authority, or knowledge or whatever, there was a lot of admiration, and admiration can turn into something more than just admiration. You say, Brother Militello, 
Why broach this? Well, because you know it. You, you know it because the enemy who goeth about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour is always on the prowl. He's always looking for ways to undo you, to get you in trouble, uh, to bring uh, jealousy into the picture, into the church family, especially with women. And uh, I, I look back and I say, well, gee, the Lord protected me up to a point uh, because I, I, I don't usually divulge personal stuff, but my wife did get kind of put out with me and uh, decided she wasn't happy with me and, and she decided to leave. There was no divorce, but this was, uh, I don't know, ten, ten and a half years ago already. It was, yeah, ten and a half years ago. And she decided to seek her happiness apart from staying with me. It was a big blow. It it tore my heart out. It was really, really tough. And uh, for a while, I didn't know if I was going to make it. Like I said, uh, it's not good for a man to be alone. And uh, I'm saying this only to give weight to what I'm saying here about standing up to things and being strong and fighting. Now, if you had told me back then that the Lord would give me enough grace or supply the grace I needed to live alone apart from having a wife, I would have said it's not going to happen. Uh, knowing me, it's not going to happen. I had been with my wife. She was my first steady girlfriend. and She had just, believe it or not, turned 15. This was in uh, September 1963, a couple of months before Kennedy got assassinated. I had just graduated high school that June. I, and then July, I just turned 17 myself. She had just turned 15 and uh, met her through some friends. And uh, how much do you know about love when you're 17? I don't know, but <laughs> I had enough of it to run after her. Uh, very pretty girl, very sweet. And uh, it, it, it was just something about her, just a wonderful disposition. And we've been together since then. So that's 1963. And ten and a half years ago, that was 2010. 2010, when uh, she said to me, I, I find it too difficult to live with you. There were signs and indications that she wasn't spiritually uh, going, getting the nourishment she needed from the Lord. Her private time with the Lord wasn't sufficient at all. She had complained about some of the sermons, Dr. Ruckman especially, and she said there were dysfunctional people in the church. Well, there's dysfunctional people all over. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, she had been watching the Lifetime channel. That's that woman's channel, that soap opera crap. That's on during the day on cable and uh, just got away from the Lord. And uh, now I'm not going to give her, I'm not going to make it sound like she was uh, narrow-minded and foolish and all of that. There were uh, I could have handled the situation better. But the cracks began to appear not long after I was in the ministry. And uh, she felt that I wasn't giving her as much attention as I ought. And uh, looking back, maybe so. I could have done a better job, I'm sure. But uh, I lived as a Christian. I behaved myself. I loved the Lord. I went out to win souls. She always knew where I was. And it was just one of those things. She held some things against me that were part of my life before I came to Christ. And uh, maybe those things just festered in her heart. I don't know. I, I can't get inside a person's heart, mind. Only God knows, and especially with a woman, it's so hard. And why am I saying this? Only because I have to tell you, whatever, whatever you're going to face in the time that we have left, count on the Lord giving you the grace you're going to need to get past any situation any situation 
And I'm, I'm using this story here about Joseph because 10 years is a long time. And when I read that story, I, I sometimes think of my situation. And he's 10 years there, rotting away, and finally he gets out because uh, one of the guys, he interpreted a dream for a butler and a baker, and one of them just forgot to remember him before Pharaoh. So he's stuck there, but he finally gets out uh, because he can interpret dreams. And uh, how did he handle his situation? How, did, how do you handle it? Uh, apart from the grace of God, you don't handle it. So I'm looking back and I'm saying to myself, the Lord was extra good to me, gave me the grace I needed to survive and to resist. Uh, there were situations where one or two, maybe there were others <laughs> in the church that had their eye on me, and uh, I, I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't respond properly. I just, I liked attention to, to some degree, but I was really afraid of getting tied up again. And uh, that's what happens sometimes. I got very close when my uh, dog died years ago. It was before I was saved, that beautiful little dachshund. And he, and he died, and I was so upset over it. And I said, I'm never getting a dog again. I'm not going to give my affections to an animal. I, I mean, come on. It's not a human being. Well, I'm not going to go through this again. And uh, I never did get a dog again. Now, some of you listening probably say, you know, Brother Milton, I don't appreciate that. I don't believe that way. Fine. <laughs> you've got your own opinion and that's okay I'm just telling you something about myself and I think uh, you, you deserve to know some of these things I, uh, I'm recording this message now for uh, Brother Don Nesbitt exclusively I'm not sending this on to Final Fight I usually send on every message to Final Fight uh, radio I've been recording for them now five or six years since since the beginning of 2016. And the reason I want to uh, have this exclusively for my brother Don is because he allowed me to go on to his uh, platform, his channel, his YouTube channel, and I think now it's been a little over a year since he put my stuff on there, I think last November probably or October maybe, and uh, I've gotten to know some of you, I've responded some of your comments, and I start to open up a little more. I consider you almost like family. I were family in Christ, for sure. But uh, that's the way the Lord is moving me to tell you some of these things and how much I appreciate the opportunity that Brother Don has given me to speak truth to God's people and to help them deal with the circumstances that they face in their lives. Uh, that's why I'm putting out the, the messages. I, I move according to the Spirit of God. He shows me a portion of Scripture, and I, I consider it, meditate on it, and then decide, well, I'm going to talk about this particular portion. And, and it was just me feeling lonely, I guess. And I do feel that way at times. And thinking about Joseph and what he had to go through and then having the Holy Spirit whisper in my ear, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, endure hardness and keep reminding me you, you're on a journey here. You're just a pilgrim here. You're, you're not going to stay here. This is not your home. Everything here is for a while and then it passes. And what you have to look forward to is far, far greater than anything God can do for you on this earth. It says in the scripture, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And in his presence is fullness of joy, which none of us know of, really. And uh, who knows? I keep praying. One day, my wife, who lives in St. Petersburg near my daughter, uh, might wake up one morning and say, uh, I'm going to fix things. I've tried to reconcile, and uh, it hasn't worked. So, uh, And I still pray, and I hope, and I say, well, the Lord can turn things around, sometimes uh, 10 years, not much in the sight of the Lord. But I would lie if I said to you that that doesn't affect me at times because of what the Scripture says. A woman can handle these things better than a man. Uh, so there is a loneliness. And, it's a, and when this first happened and I told my mother, <laughs> God bless my mom, she said, son, she's, she's not going to, I don't think she's coming back. 
I said, what makes you say that, Mom? She says, well, you take care of her too well. You send her more than enough money to meet her needs and whatever, and uh, women can be independent that way today like they never could have been before. So uh, I thought about that, and I says, well, if this is my situation until the Lord comes, amen. Because the, the Scripture says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. One time I got real angry with my wife, and I said, you're... You shouldn't be a Mrs. Militello. My mother, my father's mother, Mrs. Militello, my grandmother, was over 50 years married when she passed with cancer, committed to her husband, and my mother, over what, 68 years married, committed to my father. Uh, they were Mrs. Militellos that took the word commitment seriously for whatever reason you haven't, and you ought to be ashamed. But enough of that being said, I want to thank you all for putting up with what I have to say. And you got your own situations to face. And be assured that I'll remember you in prayer. The subscribers to Brother Don Nesbitt's channel are in my prayers. Amen. Amen.